Hey everyone, this is Luke. In this video, I'm going to start taking you through confidence intervals for a population mean. What they are, the general form of a confidence interval, and then later on we'll be looking at specific cases and some example calculations of confidence intervals. But just for now, to get us started, let's just look at what are what are confidence intervals? Well, confidence intervals describe an interval of expected values for a parameter to a certain degree of confidence. So it's, a, it's an interval of expected values. It is trying to say we expect the value to lie within A and B, A to B. Now you contrast this with a point estimate. So a point estimate is where you say you just calculate the sample mean and you use that as your estimation for the population mean. Now the interval will give you more information about the variability of the data set. So with a large interval relative to the scale of the, of the sample mean, you would say the data set has a high level of variability. Whereas if you have a very small range relative to the scale of the population mean, for example, if you're measuring height and your interval is only say 5 or 10 centimetres, you say there's quite a small level of variability in the data set. In general though, the rule is the wider the interval, the more likely it is that it will capture the true value. So if you're looking at a 95% confidence interval and then you expand that out to say a 99% confidence interval, the 99% confidence interval is going to be wider than the 95% because it's more likely to contain the, uh, we're making it more likely to contain the true, the true population value. So the, the general form of a confidence interval is essentially that we're going to take the, the point estimate for what we're trying to, to estimate. So in this case, we're looking at a population mean. So our point estimate is just going to be the, uh, the sample mean. And then we're going to add or subtract some kind of buffer, if you like, or an error, some kind of sampling error that represents the expected distance away from the true mean that we could be within the sample. And what that's built around is the critical uh, Z value. So that is the Z value that bounds the confidence interval um, in a normal distribution. So essentially, if we're looking at a 95% confidence interval, this is the Z statistic, which leaves 2.5% in either of the extreme tails. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. Then we're going to be multiplying this by the standard error or the sampling or or the sampling error, uh, if you like. And that's usually the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the number um, of data points in the sample. So let's just move on. With the critical value, first of all, with the critical value, what's that try what that is trying to describe again is it's leaving 95% uh, in the middle of the distribution and then 2.5% in each of the tails. So I'll just try and uh, demonstrate that quickly here. So essentially the 95% Z statistic will leave 2.5% in each of the tails, leaving with a total confidence area of 95%. So it's trying to capture 95% of the data points or 95% of the potential values for the population mean to be more accurate. And in that, in that case, the Z statistic that bounds 95% of the potential values for the population mean is 1.96. 1.96. So next up, we'll just start by looking at some of the more specific cases for calculating the confidence interval for a population mean. Now, the first case we'll look at is when the standard deviation of the population is known. Now in that circumstance, and you have a normal uh, distribution for the population, in that circumstance you can continue to use your Z statistic. So your Z statistic is going to be that, again, that critical value that bounds 95% of the potential values of population means multiplied by the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the number of data points in the sample. And I've just drawn another 
another representation of that just to affirm again uh, what we mean by the critical Z value. So if we're looking at a 95% confidence interval, so 95% of population mean values will lie within these two Z statistics, which are known as our critical, our critical Z statistics, and they will leave 2.5% in either tail if we are looking at a 95% distribution of potential values for population means. So let's just look at a quick example and hopefully you'll get the idea of what I mean by calculating a confidence interval um, when we know the standard deviation of the population. So essentially let's just say in our example here that we have our sample mean of 20, a standard deviation of the population of 5, a sample size of 50, and then a Z statistic, so that's for 95% confidence of 1.96. Then the 95% confidence interval for the mean is going to be, so our sample mean plus or minus that critical Z value multiplied by the, the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So then if we substitute in our population mean, our, our uh, sample mean, sorry, 20 plus or minus 1.96, and then if you calculate that, it's 0 0.7071, so it's going to be 20 plus or minus, uh, to two decimal places, 1.39. So what this tells us, what this tells us is that we, we are 95%, in terms of interpreting this, we are 95% confident that based on the information we have gathered about the population and our sample, that the population mean, mu, will lie between, is, is between 20 minus 1.39, so 18.61, and 20 plus 1.39, so 21.39. So we'll just pause there for now, guys. Hopefully that was a helpful introduction to calculating confidence intervals. Um, in the next part of, these, of this video, we're going to look at how to calculate a confidence interval when the standard deviation of the population is not known. So hopefully this was helpful, guys. See you later. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.